Carl Heinz is an expert on volatility and risk management with more than 25 years of experience in equity and credit derivatives. He's chairman and CEO of Scenario Risk Advisors, and he's with me here today. Carl Heinz, hedges come at a cost. Are we looking at the end of what you might call unlimited upside? Well, I think uh, if they do come at a cost, there's no free lunch in the world. Uh, and that's one lesson, hopefully, to be learned uh, from the last crisis. But more importantly, I think there is a sea change going on. Uh, the role of the fiduciary is being redefined as we speak. And I think uh, when you think about the fiduciary is not getting paid to outguess the market and outguess the future, but is being paid to service the underlying constituency. In that sense, it is two things. Avoid disastrous outcomes is paramount and achieve the expected payout rate with a higher degree of likelihood. In that sense, to, to hedge, obviously, is a paramount, uh, paramount importance. Now, when you're talking about fiduciaries, you're talking about the people that you advise, say, the people on the investment committees yes. or the boards, for example, exactly. of college endowments, of pension funds, exactly. of foundations. These are organizations that can ill afford to have to continue paying out in the midst of a crisis. So if they follow the kind of advice that you give them, if they take a different approach to risk management, ultimately, what is it going to mean on the positive side, even if it means constrained returns in an up market? Yeah. I think uh, the, the big uh, change has to happen that people have to get away from hogging the benchmarks, hogging some indices, because at the end of the day, you're sitting here. If you do this with your own money, do whatever you want to do with it. Right. You can look you, at you unlimited look upside, at unlimited but also upside. unlimited downside. I, exactly. You cannot, if you're a fiduciary, you cannot afford this, because ultimately you will fail you know, uh, the underlying constituency. Because one disastrous you know, uh, result, all the 15, 20, 30, 100 basis points of outperformance you might achieve over time mean nothing against a 30% down year that ultimately, you know, you're going to go back to the pensioner and have to tell him that, you know, you, 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 know, you weren't able to, you know, meet the payout rate. You know? One idea that I find kind of compelling is compare your experience in the financial crisis to that of a car accident and the whole idea of needing to wear a seatbelt. Explain that for a yeah. moment. Well, well, hopefully that car accident that you had gone through was such that, you know, you didn't get killed, okay? So uh, it is of more been, uh, it be benign enough that you can live another day. In that sense, you're going to put the seatbelt on in, in the next time you step into the car. Now, putting a seatbelt on is no doubt restraining in some form. You're limiting your degrees of freedom. You know, putting on the hedge is clearly restraining because it, you, you're not going to do the victory lap that the market is up. 20, you know, 15%, and you said you were up, you know, 16%, uh, because you're going to limit your upside. But on the other hand, you will restrain yourself right in the seat when an accident happens. And I think that's it's a good comparison. We're just flashing some charts on the VIX as you were yeah. talking. Back during the so-called great moderation when Greenspan was in charge of the Fed, we were looking at a VIX in the order of 12. Now it's 20 and it hit 85 during the depths of the crisis. What kind of VIX do you think we need to get used to living with going forward? I think you mentioned the word regime change. I think we have seen a shift of the mean, a shift of the average of the volatility for probably a long time to come. You know, the mean was down at the 12 level, as you said. Now it shifted up to 20 to 22. But this implies higher likelihood of wider swings because a higher you know, volatility obviously implies the distribution gets wider uh, in the future. So the likelihood of losses, clearly as well as gains, is higher. Carl Heinz, I yeah. want to ask our producers to bring up another chart. This is the one that compares the CRI, that's the Scenario Risk Index that you put together yes. with the S&P 500, and explain what this shows. You can see here that the S&P 500 is the yellow line, yes. and the white line is the Scenario Risk Index. What has this been telling us? What should we learn from this, this, this comparative chart? Yeah, the Scenario Risk Index is a composite of, uh, of five sub-indices, uh, sub-measurements. These are all futures and options derived in, uh, pieces of information. What we are basically displaying for our own sake, because we have to separate signals from noise, you know, when we spring into action to dial up, uh, dial up the hedges. So this chart basically it addresses, um, it's, it's based on standard deviations. As soon as we move out of half a standard deviation mark and then into the one standard deviation move, yeah, then we're basically red alert or, 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 or an orange alert to, to dial up the, the But hedges. what we saw very briefly, yeah. what we saw happen was that the risk index rose as the S&P 500 was rising. So people are getting used to better returns, but the risk is also going up at the same exactly. time. Exactly. This is something like an early earthquake tremor system. You, know, you saw the risk index rise 
at the same time when uh, the S&P was rising. That's a, it's a, a dangerous signal. Carl Heinz, thank you.